and welcome to Members on the Mic with the Troy Chamber of Commerce. I'm Tara thompson Husack, President and CEO of the Troy Chamber of Commerce, and I am joined today by my amazing co-host and Vice President of the Chamber, Sheila Denstad. Hi, everyone. First and foremost, I'd like to take a moment to thank our presenting sponsor, Tryon Solutions. Stay tuned for the very first commercial where you will learn how you can rely on Tryon. Sheila, we've got a great guest lined up today. Why don't you do the introduction? I am actually very honored and excited to do this introduction. So everyone, pay attention. <laughs> today we're meeting with Ashley Chambers with Chief Financial Credit Union. For Ashley, banking and life in general is about more than just dollars and cents. As the Director of Business Development for Chief Financial Credit Union, Ashley prides herself on setting individuals up on the road to financial success with the stability, independence, and freedom that comes with having proper financial education. And while others may be motivated by fancy titles and big bonuses, her greatest fulfillment comes from simply helping everyday people achieve their financial goals, empowering them with the knowledge, tools, and connections to maximize their banking experience. It what's it's what drives her not only to thrive at Chief, but also in her, in her life and her local community. In addition to serving as faithful member under the Troy, Auburn Hills, Birmingham, and Rochester Regional Chambers of Commerce, Ashley also serves on the Board of Directors of the Young Professionals of Rochester, as well as the Rochester Community Schools Foundation. Welcome, Ashley. Thank you, Sheila. So I just first want to start with the fact that your last name is Chamber. It Which is. means you are the perfect guest for a podcast like this. Absolutely. I mean, I'm sure that's why I was invited, to be honest with you. You know, probably. So, well, another reason, too, and I know you left this out of the bio for right now. I know you'll be putting it in, but you were also the recipient of a Troy Chamber Business Excellence Award last year Woo-hoo! as Young Professional of the Year. I was. I was very honored for that. That was awesome. Um, and kudos to you both for putting on an amazing award ceremony and, and having to pivot to be virtual. But that was such an honor. Um, minor flex, I try not to keep that too much in my bio, but yeah, that's absolutely an award that I make sure I have in my background during my Zoom meetings. I, obviously. Well, and it's nice too, because we remember seeing all the votes coming in and obviously you had a substantial amount of them. So oh, it awesome. just shows the impact you made in your career. But going along those same lines, what got you involved into banking? What, what, brought your passions to life in this career because you obviously love what you do. I do. I, lo- I love what I do. I've been doing, th- this is, is truly my passion and what I've started out at, you know, 18 as my first job. I knew going into it, and I think you had touched on this in my bio, I knew going into adulthood, so to speak, that I wanted to start a career that I could actually give back in a way I understood. And what I understood at that time was finances and how difficult it was to manage finances. I come from a very lower working middle class family and realized very quickly living paycheck to paycheck, although sustainable when it had to be, didn't account for those emergencies. So I actually graduated college in 07, which 08, 09 was the recession. Oh, and yeah. It was a huge big deal. So starting in a credit union setting a year prior to that really kind of launched me into showing what it matter or what it means to have financial education and financial literacy and to make it through those tough times as opposed to just living day to day, week by week, that sort of thing. And I realized very quickly, you don't know what you don't know, right? So a lot of our community and a lot of what our schooling is doesn't really incorporate financial literacy or or up to date financial education. So that's something that I'm very passionate about and really kind of sparked my interest of getting into a credit union and to be very transparent, I needed to learn more about banking myself and, and how to become a how to become a financially stable adult. So Yeah. No, for sure. Many things I remember my mom trying to help me uh get my checkbook together, especially when I was in college. Oh, bad, bad memories. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's once the foundational knowledge is there, you're good to go. But setting that is very difficult. Yep. And it's a difficult conversation to have when yep. especially when you're a working parent trying to get by yourself to instill saving habits and things like that when you can't really lead by example. It can be difficult to have those conversations. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, Ashley, one of the things I know we all notice about you is you're out and about in the community all the time. If there's anything LinkedIn, you're everywhere. Thank I don't you. think I've seen a post without Ashley's name in it, which I is actually it. awesome. I love that. I love that. <laughs> what, what was the biggest hurdle in getting started and doing that? What can you tell others that want to achieve that type of goal? 
Well, first and foremost, I have to give kudos to my team at Chief for allowing yeah. me to spread my LinkedIn wings, so to speak. <laughs> um, LinkedIn was something that I had come across it, it, being completely transparent as a, as a young millennial. I really had no idea what LinkedIn was, the validity of it. So when I found it, uh, found about the platform as a whole, I quickly realized I could kind of utilize this as both a tool to build my business and grow my business, but also to grow myself professionally and run those in tandem. What I realized very quickly is that people will engage more with an individual than they do with the organizational page. So being a representative for Chief Financial in the most efficient, positive light was crucial. So going out to events and showing how we were giving back was one of the coolest ways that I could post about that. And then also kind of gain traction for those products and community engagement items that we really wanted to highlight within Chief so our communities know that we were there for them in the way of products and services and what we were doing in the way of sponsorships through the chamber and, and various other activities. So it was very organic. Um, one hurdle that I had to come across is kind of taking it away from the Facebook setting, right? Like LinkedIn is a very professional setting. It's 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 got to be that way, but there's also a level of approachability that you have to have. And I think you do it. You both do a very excellent job at being that approachable face and then also being able to have that professional vibe and being able to promote the Troy Chamber in the correct light. And it's a, it's a hard balance to have. Mm -hmm. So um, that was one of the biggest hurdles is kind of knowing how to use each social media platform to the best advantage and what's going to be the best for your organization. Yeah, and not to take away from the social media perspective, but when I first met you is how I actually knew about Chief. So yes, as silly as it is, yeah. it's, it's that one-on-one -on -one interaction as well where I really didn't know much about Chief Financial. I did not. I um, but you introduced it to me, so I learned about all the great things you do. Can you talk to me a little bit about the importance of actually getting out there? Yes, absolutely. So I will say to uh, capitalize on that, <laughs> it's, it's very funny when my CEO goes out to events and people will look at him and they'll go, oh, do you know Ashley Chambers? <laughs> this is kind of the loser, I, I the actually, of Chief. So. I I actually think I've done that before. <laughs> it's quite, it's very humbling for me and it's, it's, it's awesome when that happens. But we as an organization, and again, this goes back to our foundational roots, realized that, you know, you can have commercials and you can have these big sort of things, but the local touch points, those local, local events, local supports, local engagements are what really stick in people's mind. So having that ability to kind of incorporate that into the professional setting, into chief financial in a way that both showed activation within the events that we were at, as well as simply giving back to the community. Because mm -hmm. as a credit union, that is part of our philosophy. So being able to do that was kind of an organic part of the relationship and was something that we quickly realized we could capitalize on and not just where our headquarters is, but the various other communities around us. We do have things up and coming in the Troy area, Ooh, but we do. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I'm so, so excited. Um, but we do realize that a lot of people have crossover within our communities. You know, we um, have a lot of people that live in Troy, work in Rochester, mm -hmm. vice versa. We have a branch in Dearborn. A lot of people come up to Birmingham. So we're, we're kind of located all over the place. And it, it's, it's important that we give back to each of those communities in the way that's going to benefit them the best. Yeah, makes sense. Well, I think this is a great time to take a little break and hear a word from our presenting sponsor, Tryon Solutions. Stay tuned, everyone. Small business owners have faced unimaginable challenges, but business owners are resilient. They get back up and find new ways to reinvent the way they do business. And they rely on Tryon now more than ever to handle payroll and taxes, benefits administration, workers' compensation, regulatory compliance, and other HR issues. See how Tryon can help your business at RelyOnTryon.com. Welcome back to Members on the Mic with the Troy Chamber of Commerce. We're here with Ashley Chambers with Chief Financial Credit Union. Ashley, anyone who knows you, and I mean anyone who knows you, knows you are passionate about giving back. And I know you've touched a little bit about that. But what are some of your passions in sharing your knowledge or the impact you guys are making over at Chief? <laughs> Again, kind of reflecting back to the foundation that people, you don't know what you don't know and nobody's to blame for that. And this, this is, you know, from the young age of, you know, instilling habits when you're in elementary school, all the way up to adulthood, the people that I went to school with don't understand, you know, those basic foundational knowledge pieces. And those are really what make our products and services at Chief 
the most effective and the most utilized, the, way, the best way to utilize them. So in order to have those products and services be successful within our communities, we really want to tailor what we do to introduce those products and services in a way that is approachable for them. And the way we do that is talking about financial basics. A lot of our products and services are very, very easy to use and being able to give back to our community through those is crucial. We are definitely involved in the community in the way of engagements, sponsorships, mm -hmm. supporting our schools and things like that. But being able at the end of the day to give back to the bottom line and have people's money work as hard for it as they do for it to earn it, it's crucial. It is absolutely crucial. And in order to extend that knowledge, we do that through those community engagements and through that financial education that we have. And that, again, if you haven't realized, is a very big passion of mine. <laughs> Couldn't tell <laughs> no. at all. No. <laughs> well, you know what? I think we just transitioned again because um, we were talking about extending knowledge into our favorite segment, Did You Know? <gasps> oh, uh, Sheila, what did you know? A little fact are you going to share with us today? Well, today I'm going to talk about one of the committees that we have at the Troy Chamber, which is our Young Professionals Group. How fitting now that we're here with the winner, the Young Professional of the Year winner. So yes, and yes. actually Ashley can attend those events where <laughs> Tara and I cannot. We are not. We are too old. That group is geared to those at Young Professionals 35 and younger. They host a lot of different events, some of which are educational, again, to help the 35 and younger folks grow not just personally, but professionally. They foster networking amongst their peers. And this group also provides leadership opportunities to help the other up and coming um, young professionals within the chamber. So that is what we know. And now you know too. <laughs> So, awesome. so if you're interested in joining one of these committees, Sheila, where should they go? Why, that would be www.troychamber.com. I bet you couldn't have guessed that. <laughs> and I can attest the, the young professionals of Troy is an amazing group. Shout out to Sydney. I know she just recently yes. had a very Fantastic. successful event. Um, if you are a young professional within the Troy Chamber, take advantage of this group. You know, it, it is a way to bond with people that are with, within your age group so we can all kind of learn <laughs> from each other. But the connections that you can make above and beyond that far surpass just being part of a young professionals group and we do like to have fun as well and have those social networking events and that sort of less pressure situation but take advantage of the various committees and if you are a young professional 35 and under please join Sydney and the uh the young professionals of Troy and then tell us all about it and then tell yeah, them because we're, we're a little jaded we can't even go to our own events but <laughs> it's all right it's fine we are, we're dealing with our age it's fine uh <laughs> Ashley, obviously, uh, credit unions stepped up for businesses during COVID. So that I can't even fathom the amount of things that you guys were working on during this time. But how has COVID actually affected your business? I think it's affected it in, you know, I think uh, good, bad, and indifferent would be a way that I would describe it. And I think that applies for most organizations, especially in the financial institution realm. Um, in the good, a lot of it, we were able to help with those PPP loans for the people that were kind of getting turned away from larger financial institution because they quote unquote weren't, you know, didn't have enough funds that they needed. And to know that somebody just needed five, ten thousand dollars to stay afloat through that pandemic was something that Chief really wanted to be able to step up and help. So we were able to help in that. A lot of what we do at Chief, as you know, is community oriented. So having that kind of come to a screeching halt and pivoting that was huge. And that's not only for my department and marketing and business development, but for our staff as a whole. Our staff loves going out to community events. They oh, love yes. to volunteer. And, and yes, yeah, so, you, so when know. Chief shows up, we show, we show up with, with quite a crowd. So it was a big deal. And that kind of, you know, from a emotionally intelligent and mental health standpoint was something Chief made sure on our management and leadership that we were taking care of those employees and making sure that especially our frontline staff who had to be in the building, yeah. who had to still service them because, you know, credit unions and financial institutions are considered an essential organization, Absolutely. making sure that they were taken care of in obviously the PPE Mm -hmm. portion of it, but also in the mental health aspect. And I would say another good part of that is I was really humbled and proud of how my organization stepped up and did that. And I am proud to say we, we retained every single employee. We, we, did, we did an amazing, amazing job doing that. And we really grew close. Um, one thing that I think um, bad or hurdle to come back to, and I think a lot of organizations are struggling with this as well, is 
now bringing it back in person because yeah. we are that community centric organization. We want to get back out there. We want to be the feet on the ground. And and my teammate Jen Harbin does an amazing job getting back out in the community. Yeah. And we want also award winning nominee awesome. <laughs> and awesome. Detroit Chamber ambassador. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> she is. She is phenomenal. She is phenomenal. And now I'm going to events and people. Oh, do you know Jen Harbin? <laughs> <laughs> this is how Tom feels. Uh, but it's it's truly a way for us to you know involve everybody. And one hurdle we have is wanting to bring our team back and then doing that in the safest light. So I think as time progresses, we're, we're progresses, we're able to. Look at other financial institutions, other credit unions, see what they're doing. Our CEO is very active within the credit union realm. So we very much feed off of each other. Credit unions are a one bonded organization. So being able to do that and then restore what we had prior to this and that one team, one mission, I think is is crucial. Um, I wouldn't consider it a hurdle. I would consider it something that's going to be super fun to redo in 2022. Well, and I do want to commend you on the aspect of we know a lot of members who went to Chief for PPP funding, and they were unsuccessful in so many other locations. And I think really what it came down to is they had someone to speak with. Yes. They had someone to talk to where a lot of people got stuck. I know Sheila and I were both handholding a lot of members during that time and walking through the application processes and helping them through that. But they had a trusted resource. And, yeah. and I will say there are a lot of members that was able to work with you and truly it made a huge impact. Thank you. I would I would do it. I would do it all again. It was an amazing experience. It's obviously not what I normally do in business yeah. development, but I, I loved it. And it was an amazing feeling at the end of the day to be able to say that we helped over 50 small businesses stay in business during a time when it was it was struggling for everybody. It's amazing. Kudos. 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 All right. <laughs> One last nugget of information that you could share that you think our members, our listeners can use the minute they hear it. Um, well, nugget, I had chicken nuggets last night for dinner, <laughs> so Delicious. I don't know why that just triggered into my head. But one <laughs> nugget of information that I've truly found to be invaluable. Most things in life, you are going to get out of them what you put into them. Most things in life can be viewed as a relationship, Right. Mm -hmm. Song and dance is the same. So with the Troy Chamber, with your professional career, you are going to get out of it what you decide to put into it. I'm active within the Troy Chamber and I go to events and I pride myself on being able to walk into a room and see familiar faces. Not only the staples of the community that have been in the, been in the chamber for decades, but also the new faces. It, I have pride in that. And that's something that's very took a while to to gain the traction so you know if you don't see anything in the first three six months don't be discouraged it will come I promise but it's it's being able to do that and and give that part of it back and also in your professional life with any opportunity use it as a way to grow so the connections you can make through the chamber the connections you can make through your organization do so my final nugget <laughs> always ask why always ask why something's done the way it's done why do we do what we do? Because I can guarantee you're going to acquire knowledge or you're going to help improve a process. So always ask why. Love it. I know, right? I'm like, that, those it. were, that was way better than a chicken yeah. nugget. So. I mean, they were, they were, they were very good chicken nuggets last uh, night though, right. you know? <laughs> well, we'll Pretty after. popular Why? Too. Why were they? No, I'm just teasing. <laughs> uh, guys, that's all we have here today for members on the mic with the Tri Chamber of Commerce. I wanted to thank everyone for joining us today and especially to Ashley Chambers with thank Chief you. Financial Credit Union. You were wonderful and you shared so much great insight. So thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate you. Thank you so much to both of you. It's been a pleasure. Absolutely. And guys, I'd also like to give a big shout out to our presenting sponsor, Trian Solutions. And guys, for more information on joining the chamber or for upcoming events, go to TroyChamber.com and have a great rest of your day. Thanks Bye -bye. so much for joining us. Bye-bye. Thank you.